Welcome to our review on producing electricity using chemistry. So one of the things that you use in your everyday life without much thought are chemical cells. So these are your typical batteries that we've got in loads of appliances. So chemical cells have an exothermic reaction that occurs within the cell. And as a result of that, it will develop a potential difference between those two ends of the cell itself. So that when the cell is connected into a circuit, a current will flow through the cell and the components of that circuit. Another kind of cell that we can use is a fuel cell. So a fuel cell is going to produce electricity through a chemical reaction between a fuel and oxygen, but without combustion occurring. So we don't have to burn the fuel in oxygen to make it work. If we take hydrogen and react it with oxygen in an exothermic reaction, we produce water vapor. So we use a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell to actually carry out this process, but we've separated it into two reactions, one occurring on each side of the cell. So on the right hand side, I've given you a diagram of one of these hydrogen oxygen fuel cells. So on the left hand side, you can see the hydrogen fuel coming in and on the right hand side, we've got the oxygen and these are separated into the two halves by a proton exchange membrane, which runs down the center of the cell. So the first thing that's going to happen, we can look at the left hand side is that the hydrogen molecules will lose electrons to form hydrogen ions. So I've given you the equation at the bottom there. So we start off with two molecules of our hydrogen gas, and then we're going to form four hydrogen ions and four electrons. The hydrogen ions we've just formed are able to pass through the proton exchange membrane, because remember, a hydrogen ion is also known as a proton. So it's able to move from the left-hand side across the proton exchange membrane to the right-hand side of the fuel cell. The electrons travel through an external circuit, which you can see as they move up there, they're going through the external circuit to the other side of the fuel cell. So they don't go through the proton exchange membrane. They're taken through an external circuit and they can power any components attached as they travel through. Then on the right hand side, our hydrogen ions combine with oxygen and electrons to make water vapor. So we've got our four hydrogen ions we generated on the left. They've gone through the proton exchange membrane. And then as they reach the right hand side where our oxygen goes in, joins with an oxygen molecule and four electrons to make two molecules of water vapor. We also need to understand why we would use these fuel cells. And they do have a few key advantages that make them useful in a variety of settings. They are lightweight, they're compact, they don't contain moving parts, and there's no need for combustion. They don't produce carbon dioxide emissions, and the only waste product is water. And we've got plenty of hydrogen available to us because we can just decompose that from water. So this makes it incredibly useful if we're thinking about either using it in cars or if we're using it in space travel, which is where it was first designed was for on the spacecraft. So what we find is there's no combustion, which is obviously pretty useful when we're talking about putting it up on a spacecraft up in space where no one can actually help if there's a fire and fires generally in space are bad news. So the fact it doesn't involve combustion and moving parts means it's very long lasting and has minimal risks to others. But as with all things, there are also disadvantages we need to be aware of. Firstly, most of the hydrogen we have available currently is made through the use of fossil fuels. So that kind of negates that whole no carbon dioxide made side of things. And secondly, there are poisonous catalysts used in fuel cells. And once the fuel cell comes to the end of its life, we have to dispose of them safely. Otherwise, they could be problems in the environment as a result of poor disposal techniques. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe how a chemical cell produces a potential difference until the reactants are used up. 
You can describe how a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell works, including the equations, and you can evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of fuel cells for a given use.